Uh, I think we can start. Uh, it's almost three. Have you started? Two minutes or two? Start the live stream. Live streaming is Atinda, should we wait for some more participants to join? Uh, it's 84. They are joining. I can't hear you. I think we should, we can wait for maximum a uh, couple of minutes. Yes, so it's yes. 3 o'clock right now. Uh, we can start at 2 minutes past uh, 3. It is okay. Okay, okay fine. Because already I can see already we have 92. Love. Yes, 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 yes. I think we should start now. It's three or two. Yeah, sure, sure. We should start. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, hello and a very warm welcome to all the participants uh, that are joining us today uh, for this uh, practitioner's knowledge building series webinar to discuss uh, municipal bylaw and solid waste management. Um, just to give a quick context uh, to the topic that we are going to discuss. So municipal bylaw has not only uh, uh, having bearing with municipal by, uh, with solid waste management, but various other functions uh, that are basically delegated to the uh, municipal administration across the country. Uh, it's a very strong uh, regulatory framework that basically you know encompassing the entire um, value chain of solid waste management starting from collection to its final disposal now the reason why the municipal administrations are also termed as local government is because uh, in in 1992 there was uh, two major reforms happened in the constitution of india the 73rd and 74th uh, out of these two 74th amendment especially uh, talks about empowering the local government with fund functions and functionary. And that law basically uh, provided the legal instrument of the municipal bylaw, uh, something that the local government would adopt and enforce themselves uh, legally. And uh, that law is uh, enforced by the state authority, state administration, or government of India. Now, uh, we made a long journey since uh, the 1980s when we had the first flagship sanitation program called CRSP in India. And till then, uh, after that, uh, till, uh, till 2016, when we had the first comprehensive solid waste management rules 2016. And even that rule specifically spoke about how municipal bylaws to be used 
to to institute a sustainable solid waste management system so we have a lot of issues to contemplate how if efe how efficiently municipal bylaws are being used these days versus how they should have been used or they could have been used now to discuss all these issues uh, we have someone with us today that uh, uh, i mean more than a, an official of the ministry he he can also be termed as an institution so i'm talking about uh, none other than uh, jv ravindra sir uh, i will i will uh, as a matter of formality i will introduce ravindra sir uh, when i invite him to speak uh, in between uh, uh, in csc we attempted to understand the efficacy of municipal bylaw how it is being implemented uh, across different parts of the country so we dive deep into the agenda and uh, the report is almost final we'll publish the report maybe in a matter of a month but we felt that uh, in the presence of ravinder sir it is a great opportunity to discuss uh, the 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 initial findings of the report so without wasting any further time i would invite uh, my 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 senior colleague mo sen gupta to to make a very short presentation but before mo begins let me just do a little bit of housekeeping announcement so this entire uh, webinar is divided into uh, into three major part so in the first part mo will make a short presentation on the study that we have uh, completed at least the field work part is completed the analysis part is completed the report is still being edited and finalized so once the presentation is over then mo will moderate a question answer based discussion with with ravinder sir before that i will introduce ravinder sir to sir to all of you and after that we will open up the floor uh, to take as many as questions as possible from the participants i can see i mean we had almost 700 people registering for this event so i'm expecting the number of participants will increase with time so on this note uh, i thank you again for joining uh, us uh, for today's webinar and uh, let me now invite uh, mo to please uh, make a presentation and keep it within time so that we have enough time to discuss the issues with ravinder sir over to you uh, thank you so much atinda uh, i will just uh, quickly share my presentation and try to make it as brief as possible uh, yes a lot of things are showing in my screen so yeah is my screen uh, visible yes yes it is visible please go ahead okay so um, to start with uh, as you have already mentioned or said the context about the 74th and 73rd amendment of indian constitution so we will uh, before that actually uh, before the bhopal tragedy gas tragedy happened in 1984 there was no specific laws uh, especially for environmental protection only we had a mention in 7, uh, 42nd amendment of indian constitution where it was said that it was a responsibility of the states to take care of the uh, to safeguard the environment and then later after bhopal gas tra tragedy we got to see we got our environmental protection act in 1986 where first uh, it was uh, spoken about uh, you know protection of environment against uh, soil air and uh, and water pollution land pollution <clears throat> then these two revolutionary acts actually came into place uh, this uh, constitutional amendment act we must say uh, through 73rd of amendment we got uh, panchayati raj system three tier panchayati raj system in the rural context and through 74th uh, constitutional amendment we got uh, the, the emergence of municipalities as a local self government actually emerged and uh, these two acts actually first gave the constitutional validity to the local government so if we uh, go by the definition and scope of uh, municipal bylaws so bylaws are law that passed uh, by a council of members of the municipalities and it can operate only within its jurisdiction and uh, it basically derived from the state municipal acts and one particular state might have more than one state municipal acts and basically bylaws are derived from that and uh, before the municipal before the introduction of 74th constitutional amendment act there were state uh, state municipal acts existing but there was no mention about the existence of existence of self government the way the panchayati raj and the municipalities we we can see now so uh, we can say that it was only in the 74th amendments that the indian constitution which got uh, you know con the local government got a constitutional validity and uh, 
if we go by the uh, definition again if we continue with that the uh, the local government are entitled to make or amend bylaws for their solid waste management and we get to see that the bylaws must be uh, you know must be passed in a specially conveyed meeting uh, or organized by the members or the the council or the body of the municipal council uh, in presence of 50% of the members in a specially conveyed meeting and bylaws for solid waste management are actually a comprehensive regulatory tool which basically encompasses all the components of solid waste management value chain starting from the uh, the, the say, source segregation to, to, to collection and uh, up processing and until the final disposal all the components are, are should be mentioned in a bylaw then uh, in our study we uh, we have basically analyzed the, uh, I'll come into that uh, data, the number of cities we have uh, studied. So uh, we have studied uh, 37 cities, the bylaws of 37 cities, where we have found that two basic components uh, are very, very important or prime in, in every bylaws. So one is uh, called duties of waste generators, where we can see the waste generators are supposed to segregate waste at source they are so they are not supposed to litter not supposed to burn waste not supposed to dump waste and there is mandate for bulk waste generators there is a mandate for paying user charges and another important component is duties uh, of the local government where we can see the local government is supposed to do the door-to-door -door collection the processing um, you know whenever necessary it can find uh, the the people who are not not conforming to the to the solid waste management rules or acts and it has that uh, power and authority to collect user charges basically bylaws authorize them to penalize or to collect user charges from the waste generators and we can also say that solid waste management rules 2016 is basically mandating every urban local bodies to frame or amend bylaws within the one year of the uh, notification of solid waste management rules 2016 that means by 2017 every uh, municipalities should have their own bylaw either framed afresh or amended and apart from these two basic components every bylaw we have seen is basically talking about some other issues like adopting 3r principles reduce reuse and recycle to you know taking initiative for behavior change uh, popularizing the provisions of bylaws <clears throat> doing welfare measures for such for the sanitary workers uh, reducing burden on the landfill as as minimum as uh, waste should go fresh waste should go to the landfills and there is also provision of uh, periodical revision of the bylaws uh, as of you know whenever new uh, new amendments in the policies in the in the waste management system is emerging the bylaw should be revised accordingly so these are the basic components we can uh, we can see in a in majority of the bylaws we have studied so uh, if we come uh, talk about our study or the methodology how we meant, how we did this so we uh, basically uh, we have selected 37 cities uh, keeping in consideration various aspects like topography, like uh, the river and cities, the hilly area cities, the coastal cities like this, and also the demographic uh, criteria like the population size of the city. So based on that, from the various zones of India, in I mean, North, East, South, West, we have selected 37 cities whose bylaws have been studied, first of all. And then um, we... Uh, basically rechecked it i mean we uh, we contacted the cities who are basically implementing this bylaws and we tried to understand the efficacy of the implementation of bylaws on those particular cities and later we triangulated this data with the field visit and the interaction with the stakeholders and finally we again validated this data with with the citizens with whom with a, as a, as a recipient of the services they are receiving from the respective cities so we uh, rechecked with the citizens and we did an opinion poll pan india from the citizens and we selected 15 parameters from the components i was talking about in my previous slide that the waste generation generators role and the the duties and obligatory duties of the local governments from that, we have selected 15 parameters, as you can see in my screen. 
So these are the parameters we have selected based on that with these, uh, we did this first of all analysis of the components, again, checking with the cities, how they are implementing it. And finally, uh, validating it with the citizens, how they are receiving these services uh, as a recipient from the, from the urban local body. So these are the method methodology we followed and uh, how we came up with the, uh, these are the cities, I'll just quickly mention that as you can see, the city is basically covering uh, all the respective zones of India. Uh, so I'll, I won't uh, waste much time on this slide, you'll get this data if you want later on. And what we have found, so if you go the go by the parameters, so first of all is source segregation. What we can see is that the citizens are saying only 32% it is happening, it's being implemented in the cities. Although every bylaws, 100% bylaws we have studied, we have kept it as an, as an important mandatory agenda source segregation. And if you go by the door-to-door uh, -door collection, we can see that the collection is irregular. It is, although it's, it's, it's good in number, but the collection is irregular. Wherever collection is happening, it's not necessarily it's happening every day. Not all the zones or catchment areas being covered through the collection of waste. And uh, I mean, the segregated uh, waste collection is also not in practice. And if I go by the, uh, the, the next category is prohibition of waste burning. So we can see that uh, although it's very important, uh, in terms of uh, preventing pollutions, environmental pollutions, but not all the bylaws have kept it as an as an important uh, parameter. And citizens also, only 27% citizens think that it's being maintained properly. So it is also an enforcement issue. We can see that prohibition of waste burning is not proper. And prohibition against uh, waste dumping, we can see. Can I... Uh, I think I think I'm asking that is my right side of my screen is visible? Yes, it is visible. Okay, just me because I cannot see suddenly. So I thought, uh, yeah, sorry. Let it's me... visible. It's visible. Go ahead. It's visible, no? Okay, so if I go by this, uh, so it is only twenty six percent citizens who think that prohibition against open dumping is being practiced, uh, which is a very less number, which again is an enforcement issue, which are found in the cities. And home composting as an agenda to reduce waste is a very crucial thing to maintain. But again, we are seeing that uh, only 68% cities we have studied have kept it as an option or as a mandate for the citizens, uh, as an obligatory duty for the citizens. And uh, only 37% citizens, uh, they do they have claimed that they do home composting. Maybe self, uh, self-initiative, self-motivation is a big part of that. And... Uh, Processing of waste. So uh, here, even dumping or uh, you know collecting waste and dumping, it also has been considered as processing. That's why you can see the number is high. The citizens is uh, speaking about, but the uh, but there is very less uh, processing facilities have been found found in the cities, or uh, it's not that processing. I mean, since waste is mixed at source, so it's very difficult for uh, for being being processed. The waste being processed. And then uh, about bulk my uh, bulk waste generator uh, cities. So bulk waste generators are those, as we know, in the bylaws is mentioned, no, the entities, the social or commercial entities who are uh, generating waste 100 kgs or more per day as per definition. But we have seen in many cities that they have changed this definition with the virtue of this 74th Constitutional Amendment Act. So it's uh, in some cities, it's, it's 50, 70 or 30 kgs even. But the bylaw provision is there in every, by, uh, the BWG provision is there in every uh, bylaws we have studied, but only 43%, according to the citizens, the, the implementation part is only 43%. And uh, decentralized waste management is a very crucial and important uh, parameter for sustainable solid waste management because uh, it only not only reduces the burden economic burden um, on the on the urban local bodies but it also uh, is a localized solution it it in creates community participation their ownership so we can get to see that only 26 percent cities have claimed that uh, they have seen decentralized waste management is happening in their cities and integration of informal sector is yet another uh, ignored agenda 
in in bylaws or in social waste management value chain per se so it's again only 43% cities have mentioned about it in their bylaws and the implementation is 41 all those cities whom we have contacted are claiming they are the 64% that they are they have done integration of solid uh, integration of informal sector but that is in piecemeal it's it's not whole integration we can uh, we can say and disposal of waste into sanitary landfill. Here we can see a striking difference or reverse trend of the data what you are getting. So 76% citizens are saying because it's not sanitary uh, you know, landfill, it's dump site, the dumping of waste. So they perceive it as, as uh, disposal of waste. So they are saying 76% dumping is happening in the cities. And uh, penalization and incentivization are the two very important parameters of, uh, you know, attaining sustainable uh, solid waste management and circular economy model. Uh, we have seen in many uh, cities, it has worked differently. Like, for example, in Indore, we have seen one bulk waste generator is being fined 50,000. And over the night, other bulk waste generators or big hotels are uh, with the fear of that, maybe they are also trying to comply. At the same time, in Pune, we are seeing that bulk waste generators are getting 10% tax rebate for uh, for complying. So other bulk waste generators, and there are a couple of hundreds bulk waste generators are basically complying. So these two are very important parameters which go hand in hand and work together for implementation or enforcement. But this is, uh, we have observed very low. Incentivization is just meager, it's 8%. And penalization is also 43%, which is a big in, uh, enforcement issue we have observed in, in the cities. And in terms of user charge collection, so uh, there is no periodical revision in user charges. We have seen that it's being 20, 20 rupees or 30 rupees per household. So even for the bungalows or big houses, the user charge remains same. And there is also lack of uh, lack of proper waste management services provided by the ULBs is an issue to collect proper user user charges from the citizens. And also grievance redressal mechanism is also part of a monitoring and evaluation system where we have seen that all the cities are claiming because they have some portals, such as the portal, some some mechanisms for grievance redressal, but citizens are obviously not happy with that grievance redressal. So that is why 28% citizens have just said this that uh, it's happening and um, so considering all these factors we uh, we came up with uh, just some immediate issues which we failed that need to be addressed as early as possible to make the bulk waste generators uh, mm -hmm. to, ma uh, to make the bylaws uh, contemporary and concurrent with the you know emerging changes in the you know waste management policies and also there we have found another finding is that that um, there is a gap poly, there is a gap uh, in the in the capacity of the elected representative and the um, and the appointed members of the ulb so there should be a mechanism or strategy to uh, bring them in the purview of the this endeavor of capacity building and also uh, there should be right communication strategy adopted by which um, the provisions of municipal bylaws on solid waste management should reach to every citizens, and you know they should uh, they should be made aware of the every components of the bylaws. And uh, we felt that there should be a compendium of good practices around implementation and enforcement of the municipal bylaws because there are many cities which are which are basically. Uh, doing very well in terms of uh, implementing or enforcing bylaws. So there should be a com compendium also. And also, uh, we would urge, we'll talk to him uh, later on. So we'll urge that there should be a citizen's uh, validation part in SWAT Survection. And this, this mechanism should be there where the implementation part of bylaws should be checked properly. So this is from my end. Atinda, over to you uh, to introduce, sir. I will just stop my presentation. Yeah, thank you so much, Mo. Uh, it was mm -hmm. very crisp and very brief as well. Uh, so before I request you to moderate the discussion with uh, Ravinder sir, let me do the honor of introducing him to all the participants. Uh, though Ravinder sir is someone who does not, does not need any sort of introduction to anyone, at least in the Indian ecosystem, because uh, uh, I mean, his association with the ministry is probably spreading across a couple of decades. And he has been pretty much part and parcel of all major uh, regulations 
uh, you know, uh, policies, standards, and all the rest of it. So, uh, Mr. Ravinder, JB Ravinder is currently working as the joint advisor in the Central Public Health and Environmental Engineering Organization, or CPHEEO, under the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs, Government of India. He is a B.Tech in Civil Engineering and has a Master's of Engineering in Public Health Engineering from University of Calcutta. He is serving here in this, in this position since 2005. Uh, prior to that, he was engaged with Hyderabad Water Supply and Sewerage Board as assistant engineer, and there he got promoted as assistant executive engineer and then project, project manager, and he continued working there for about 18 years. As joint advisor in the ministry, he provides technical assistance and advice to the ministry, uh, Government of India, in all matters of urban water supply, sanitation, represents ministry in technical issues and discussions with external agencies such as World Bank, WSP, Asian Development Bank, ZICA, GIZ, involved with the Bureau of Indian Standard, BIS, in water sanitation issues. He's a member of expert committee in drafting the manuals on sewerage and sewage treatment systems that were released in 2013 and on municipal solid waste management uh, 2016. So he's one of the architect of the municipal solid waste management rule itself and several other advisories uh, in uh, MSWM, so municipal solid waste management. He's a resource person in, in SBM Urban. He's also responsible for scrutinizing and giving technical approval and monitoring of projects proposals for ministry and other agencies. So on this note, Ravinder sir, a very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for taking our time to share your insights with us. I would now request Mo to you know, moderate the discussion with Ravinder sir and ask questions. Thank you, Namaskar to all. Thank you, Atiji, for that uh, very magnanimous uh, introduction. Thank you. Sir, you don't need an introduction, but I just did the formality. I mean, whosoever I spoke to during the course of this and this event was announced. So everybody was excited because it was you uh, coming from, uh, from, the, from the ministry to join us for this conversation. So thank you so much again. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity for me as well to talk to you about this. So the very first question we would like to ask you, sir. So during the course of uh, the journey of this study in the field, we have, we basically, uh, find it very difficult and challenging to kind of uh, find out the proper process step by step i mean we don't we didn't fi we didn't fi find any suggestive framework for that that how a ulb if they want to make uh, the bylaw i mean the bylaw what would be the proper step by step process for doing that so could you please enlighten us on this that because many of our participants are from urban local bodies today so it will be very uh, helpful for them if you can just explain us about the process of making or amending bylaws in the urban local bodies yeah that is a very difficult and even a boring tedious process mm -hmm. so, the state uh, government has uh, urban development departments are doing this part for the for all the ULBs put together in general and in large cities like uh, Delhi and uh, Mumbai it is being taken up directly by the urban local body. It has to move through the urban development department and it has to you know uh, the house uh, what is called the town hall or the municipal body has to approve it and move through the urban development department and has to be approved by the administrator that is uh, the governor of the state. That is the uh, whole process. But uh, in reality what is happening is uh, state governments have uh, adopted uh, urban development departments have done this only the house body, that is the municipal corporation, municipal board, or the municipal council, or the Nag Nagar Panchayat, in their uh, general body meeting, have to simply pass a resolution that, as directed by the uh, state government, we adopt the same. Otherwise, it is very difficult for the smaller urban local bodies. If there is a financially strong and very vibrant urban local party going beyond the standard 
bylaws that we have mentioned in uh, Swachh Bharat Mission or in the SWM rules, whatever environmental factors which are very particular to an urban local body, such as a municipal body which is a tourist attraction in mountainous area. So that is a very difficult uh, geography, difficult to operate during the winter seasons. They can have their specialized uh, bylaws. So they adopt and forward it to urban uh, development department and it goes through that process. Many have uh, done that also earlier. So this is the process. In fact, many ULVs are not aware of this because state governments have been notifying and giving it to them. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we have seen that many uh, urban local bodies are just following the state level bylaws, whichever model bylaw is being available, and some have modified it based on the local uh, you know, requirements. So, yeah, we have seen that. Thank you for answering this. The second one, we would like to know that, uh, see, uh, there are uh, in the, you know, SBM dashboard, we have seen that there are 4,542 registers or one local bodies. Among them, 4,477 has participated in this search survection 2023. And we know that that every urban local bodies uh, basically upload uh, their data, relevant information in search of them portal every month. And among them, one of the important criteria is whether your bylaws have been notified or not. And we have seen that uh, during search surveillance, this data has been fetched that bylaw has been notified. And it's one of the gateway to uh, kind of take part or be eligible to take part in the search surveillance. But uh, in our ground level study, we have seen, we have found such cities that which haven't notified their bylaws yet, or which um, which haven't amended their bylaws yet or notified it properly. So uh, definitely there is a gap, which we have found. So we would like to know that how the ministry is planning to do, deal with it, or a, will there be any checklist from the states will be given to the to the respective ULPs that this notification of bylaws can be made mandatory or uh, can it be tagged with any kind of eligibility to get fund like SBM or 15 Finance Commission? How this uh, notification of bylaws can be more, uh, this process or the monitoring can be more stringent? What is your stake into it? A very, a very kind of difficult question, but uh, we'll put it in three parts. For such a surveillance, uh, there is no such a bar as uh, whether you have notified the bylaws or not. Now, some of the bylaws uh, which keep coming from the Ministry of uh, Urban uh, Environment and Forest include the, the ban on the single-use plastic also. Uh, actually, we we'll go to the original definition. Municipal area is governed by the municipal body. And if there is a challenge some, somewhere that, uh, you know, municipal body has taken certain action against someone for its uh, uh, avoiding nuisance or environmental protection, et cetera. If there is a challenge that you do not have the bylaw, the municipal body will be at a loss. So the, it is important that the bylaws have to be notified or at least the notified bylaws have to be adopted by the body. So in such a surveillance, what is happening is we do not have any such that whether you are notified or not. Everybody is welcome. There are uh, certain marks of the score, which may be 50 to 100 out of uh, something like 7,000, 9,000 that are kept. Now for the uh, ULBs, which are not doing very well, right? This this is a small uh, number of marks, but when we come near to the top, near to the top 10 or 20, each and every score is very important. So they need to follow the path. For Swachh Bharat Mission, this is the second part. There are uh, three uh, mandatory conditions which are applicable. It is not specifically mentioning the municipal solid waste bylaws, but there are, you know, property tax, uh, you know, uh, rationalization, 
Secondly, user fees, implementation of user fees, which is the core financial heart of municipal bylaws that they must have notified. And thirdly, they have to adopt, and uh, most of them, there is no other go, so they have adopted the public financial management system, PFMS. We are uh, transferring the money only through PFMS. They need necessarily have to do. These are the entry level conditions, which are for Swachh Bharat Mission funding. And these are the same applicable for the 15th Finance Commission grants also. So the user fee uh, is an indicator of, of adopting the bylaws. So without that, no fund can be going. But at the same time, we are not insisting that, uh, you know, we are not checking very minutely whether this has been done. We have, we have a small kind of checklist. Whatever they say, yes, we have adopted, that's it. We take and uh, we go forward, both in the SBM and in finance uh, commission grants also. So uh, the mandatory aspect of uh, bylaws is the, you know, its validation or uh, understanding in the central government is just one of the boxes to be ticked and we are not insisting as an entry barrier. But sooner or later, it will become an entry barrier, definitely. Thank you very much. So for answering this, sir, uh, automatically my next question comes into the same same uh, purview that what are the mechanisms for monitoring the implementation of uh, bylaws? So as of now, what do you spoke that whether they have made bylaws or notified bylaws or not, and we are going to check that. But in terms of implementation or enforcement of bylaws, is there uh, any mechanism is going to be evolved around it? I mean. What is your... Madam, uh, just like what you have mentioned in your study, mm -hmm. uh, for the such survection, there are two kinds. Our assessor is going and he's doing the validation himself, looking at the documents and whether there are cases of challans and fines mm -hmm. being you know, imposed and uh, certain action being taken against segregation, dumping, burning of the waste if there is a real uh, instant and being enforced that our SSR is checking. Secondly, he is also calling up, we are also calling up through a central team only. Uh, we are getting in touch with the local resident there and getting it validated. So uh, if it is uh, not understood well by the citizens, the answer is, so therefore they may get a negative mark also. So this kind of uh, validation is happening. So enforcement is, uh, is an indirect way this in this uh, such survey. Similar kind of thing, but more stringent is happening for our garbage-free cities uh, validation certification. There is a three-star rating, one-star rating, etc. So in that, all aspects are uh, done in a more thorough manner. And... Uh, uh, then only the garbage free certification, whether one star, two star, that is issued. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yeah, but we have to be careful that it shouldn't be such celebration around. I mean, it's it's a 24-7 every day's daily activity all out the, throughout the year activity. I mean, uh, we all know that uh, how cautious cities become when it's, it's, it's time for such celebration. But it's a uh, Definitely, and our next question also comes in that line that um, that obligatory duties of cities have uh, we have seen very limited visibility of about the obligatory duties we have men seen mentioned in the bylaws. We have seen very uh, limited visibility of that. So, what is your thought to address this issue? Like uh, obligatory duties, I mean to say door to door collection, uh, you know, segregated collection, processing, and uh, you know, safe sanitary landfill of the waste. So. Uh, what is your, uh, you know, perspective about it that the obligatory duties we are seeing very less visibility in the cities. So how we can enhance or augment this uh, responsibilities of the cities in terms of implementing bylaw provisions. 
again a difficult question. So on paper, we are many cities are doing everything. When you do the uh, document assessment validation, every city seems to be doing everything. Mm -hmm. But why, uh, you know, cities at the dump sites are still existing and a lot of dirty spots are there. So segregation, two fundamental rules the cities are not implementing with whole segregation and burning of waste. Burning of waste is a big challenge. It's a <laughs> real issue, you know, it is getting underreported. There is a ban, there is an NGT order and everything, but sometimes our own, uh, I'm openly speaking, sometimes our own staff are uh, indulging in this. So these two, if the cities are uh, very pakka in implementation across the city, and uh, you mentioned or someone mentioned, if there are, you know, the defaulters are caught and penalized or uh, brought through the court process, etc. For one such case, a thousand other persons will rectify their behavior. For instance, yes, even today, in uh, you go across Delhi flyovers, uh, I think you will not be surprised to find sometimes small black colored garbage bags thrown around uh, metro premises and uh, yes. the uh, you know flyover pillars etc so we have a system we have a lot of uh, cameras also but the ulbs are uh, not having that not showing that much interest as they show in enforcing the you know, larva issues. During monsoon, in MCD, right. Municipal Corporation of Delhi, very thoroughly they come and observe the, uh, the breeding of larva for uh, preventing dengue. That is very systematically done. The same set of machinery, he also belongs to the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, uh, that can be implemented against, uh, uh, you know, mixing uh, of the waste at the generator level and burning of waste within the parks and uh, these dry leaves are a nuisance no, for them. It is very difficult to pick them and carry them also. It's a huge volume with little weight. So they are simply setting it on fire and uh, the local people are adding to it, especially during the winter uh, season when the pollution and the air stagnation level itself is at a worst stage. For uh, even to warm themselves, they are gathering the waste together and setting it on fire. But municipal corporation. Mm -hmm. Is there a network issue in his part? Yes, I think so. That's yeah. all I can say. Uh, sir, could you please repeat the last part of your answer because there were probably some internet uh, issue, so you were not audible for the last 20-30 seconds, sir, if you just could repeat what you said. Yes, sir. What is happening is uh, during the winter, a lot of leaf litter is, uh, you know, available on the streets. And uh, it is gathered together and it is set on fire to generate warmth by the uh, local watch, uh, watchmen and sometimes our own staff also. Because yes, yes. it's a tedious thing to gather it all together. Uh, it occupies a huge volume. Simple thing is to set it on fire. But that is banned. And that is uh, adding to a lot of uh, smoke and uh, PM 2.5 also. So right. cities have to really uh, be strict about it to change the behavior of our own staff and the public as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh Another finding of our study was that there was, uh, we found a huge gap in terms of capacity building, capacity of the elected representative as well as the appointed, uh, you know, employees of the urban local bodies in terms of the provision, the legal mandates of bylaws and the implementation of bylaws. So is there any plan or any, any suggestion you can give us about how we can bring all of them together in the 
in this capacity building when there was how do you see this prefer to be madam if you allow me i prefer to be mom on this <laughs> so we have found it very difficult you know uh, even we have uh, we are interacting with cities for years uh, there are very good people who want to implement bylaws who want to increase uh, or revise their user charges but because of this uh, political intent it's being uh, sometimes it's being uh, hindered it on the nail now you see now let me open up you see <laughs> some you. small cities where it is championed championed by the chairperson or the mayor mm -hmm. see i cannot believe that elected law represents or representatives are not aware of the uh, bylaws by design they don't want to know or they feel ignorance of it our understanding is that user fee is not being implemented properly fines are not being implemented properly because of the indirect pressure exerted by the uh, public uh, office holders so i need not be quoted in uh, so much detail what i am people are aware but unless they themselves champion it the city uh, if they champion it by themselves the city becomes clean over a period of time but once the chairperson during election if he loses etc another set of people come in all the good work is undone this is also happening our public representatives are uh, fully knowledgeable about property tax and all those things how they cannot know about uh, you know uh, solid waste management by laws this i can this is what i'm saying they know everything but they may be feeling ignorance about it we understand so uh, next See, question... after 10 years of such marath mission mm -hmm. right 10 years of uh, you know such surveillance nearly 10 years you know and uh, Literally, we have tried to bring even small, small ULBs also onto the stage. So the message is very much, uh, you know, widespread now. But sometimes, Absolutely. deliberately, they feel ignorance. Yeah, okay. I understand. So, uh, sir, there is a provision in Solid Waste Management Rules 2016 that review and revision of bylaws periodically as per the contemporary changes in the Solid Waste Management practice to address requirements. So apart from a very uh, meager number of bylaws reflecting time-to-time -time revisions, we haven't observed the same trend in other cities. Can we possibly recommend revision of the bylaws in a certain interval as a policy mandate? What is your thought about it? We are free to do. You see, when it comes to uh, the last tier of government, the third tier of government, that is municipal corporations, their bylaws should not dilute the national guidelines. They cannot, you know, enact something, resolve something which is diluting our national directions. But they can uh, go for more stringent ones. Just as we have discussed about mountainous region, etc. They can go for stringent ones. They, they, they have that. So for me, our solid waste management rules are supposed to be very stringent and uh, very comprehensive uh, uh, you know developed countries also one is um, i think we should stick to this only and allow the local uh, municipal corporations like panaji panaji is trying to uh, do 16 weight segregation mm -hmm. i recently came across the representation panaji wanted to do 16 way segregation because they found market for 16 types of uh, dry waste that is available. Materials. Yes. So they can do yes. that. So uh, our uh, set of uh, as far as MSW is concerned, so let us try to you know institutionalize and operate them efficiently in the next 10 years, uh, if you permit me. Right. Yeah, sir. Uh, just to add to what Mo's uh, previous questions was was all about, because the SWM 2016 rule uh, gives a clear mandate to all the cities that they must 
notify their bylaw within one year of the notification of SWM 2016. Now, SWM 2016 itself was a paradigm shift towards sustainable waste management practice. So unless the bylaws reflected what SWM 2016 basically called for, then the relevance of the bylaw, the acceptance of the bylaw, or the sustainability measures like segregation, like user charge, like penalization. So all those issues, if they are not featuring in the bylaw, then uh, you know the 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 whole uh, idea of having a bylaw is somewhere getting compromised. So that was the whole premise of the you know the question that basically Mo asked. That uh, since we are we have almost made a journey of you know eight years after the 2016 rule was notified. And there has been a series of amendments in uh, other peripheral rules like the plastic waste management in particular. So uh, my question to you, like you being an architect of the rule and all the other associated guidelines thereafter. So do you, I mean, what would be your recommendation to the cities or the state administration for that matter? That uh, whenever there is a policy change uh, at government of India level, which is applicable to the whole union of India, do you think that uh, the municipal bylaws should also be appropriately addressing those changes? Say, for example, uh, we have a, a notification on single-use plastic ban, right? And and even during the study that Mo has just completed, we have found uh, evidences that some municipal bylaws have been revised uh, by exactly enforcing those ban of those items a sale, purchase, store, or everything that the notification is asking for within the jurisdiction of the municipal you know, government. So basically, my request to you, just please elaborate whether uh, whether it is it should be the duty of the local government or the state administration to ensure that the bylaw should always be made relevant and contemporary in accordance with any fresh notification that is addressing the, uh, the sustainability factors of waste management. Can I call you back, sir? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I uh, understand now. And, uh, you know, whenever there is a SCP ban on 19 items that is there, uh, we have uh, immediately alerted, uh, you know, all our uh, state mission director that these should be notified also. So, right. so when there is a national level uh, ban or uh, order that has to be made part of the bylaws. No doubt about it. I have to clarify that. Thanks for that clarification. Yes. Okay. So I think we are due with one more question only. So uh, this is uh, this is what we want to know is can any other independent entities like railways, airport authority, etc., have their own set of bylaws for managing their solid waste manage solid waste within their establishments. Are there provisions in the overall framework of solid waste management 2016 tools? Could you please explain that whether they can have their own set of bylaws for their own waste management? Yes, ma'am. That um, the very uh, preamble says this is applicable to different special areas also, mm -hmm. like. Hmm. You know, Indian railways, airports, port, ports and harbors, hmm. defense establishment. You know, they have their own townships, but these are typically served by themselves. They, they may not be, you know, sometimes they may be served by the municipal corporation, in which case the bylaws adopted by the municipal body will have to be implemented in that area also. But in most of the cases, especially in ports and uh, port and defense establishment townships and industrial townships, municipalities are not providing those services. They are standalone townships. So it is uh, up to them to implement these bylaws. Uh, however, they cannot dilute them. This is the national guideline. They cannot dilute them. This, this this all stands. They can become more stringent. They are welcome to become more stringent, but they cannot dilute. Okay. So railways, mm -hmm. ports and arbors, 
defense townships, industrial townships are expected to follow suit with the national notifications. And how are they supposed to you know, keep the coordination with the concerned urban local body? I mean, they are they have made their bylaws, they are implementing it. But is there any uh, terms of uh, coordination required with the urban local body or they can independently? Uh, I think uh, case to case it depends. Okay. Like, you know, our uh, uh, daily cantonment body, of course, cantonments are treated at par with municipalities. Mm -hmm. They do not have their own processing plant. So they do the collection and everything and transport it to uh, the South Erstwhile South Delhi Municipal Corporation processing plant. If they have an understanding with the neighboring uh, urban local body, or they have to develop their own full capacity to process the waste, both the wet waste and the dry waste, and also take care of the hazardous waste to collect, store it, and time to time send it to a TSDS facility. So they will be acting simply like a, 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 a municipal body themselves. If they do not have any partner, they will be nearby. They have to right. uh, uh, do all those functions themselves. Right, right. And uh, if they are sending the for processing the waste to the urban local body facilities, so they are supposed to pay usual fees for that also. Now that service they are taking from the urban local bodies. Certainly, certainly, yes. You can say that they are uh, you know uh, big uh, bulk waste generators. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they just like you know like the big clear. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. So the scope of the scope of the rule is basically. It's applicable to the Union of India, regardless of uh, because the more the question that Mo just asked is a question that were asked to us when we had participants from specifically from uh, the railways, the Northern Railways. So their question was whether they can have a bylaw of their own, and then who can actually notify it, and whether the scope of SW in twenty sixteen is also applicable to them. So that was basically the yes, question. Yes, it is asked. applicable, sir. Yes, it is very much applicable. They have to. Uh, issue pass their own instrument. They may call it bylaw or whatever they call it, an order right, by the administrator, and uh, they are not implemented. Otherwise, you know, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, let me clarify that if there is any complaint against them that they are not following the uh, guide, uh, this uh, solid waste management rules, then definitely NGT or someone may uh, take them to task. Right. So the rule is the same. You see, for example, I'm telling for the understanding that we have to fulfill the law. When my vehicle went to the workshop for a, you know, backside someone dented, I was astonished to find that they are asking for pollution under control certificate. I have the compre comprehensive um, uh, insurance, but the insurance company takes the legal position that without PUC, you cannot drive on the road. Right. So right. by that technical point, I, I would have been eliminated. <laughs> right. So uh, these kind of legal will be there. So administrators have to be very careful. They have to implement all the rules. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, Atinda, over to you. I think we can open the floor for the question answer because we are done with our own okay. set of questions. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Okay, so I have a few questions from the participants and let me see how many basically we can take within the time that we have. Uh, so Mamta Jainji asking, miss the citizen poll, can we participate now? Uh, so Mamta Ji, this uh, citizens poll were part of the study so where I mean the, the, the 37 states it is that more basically uh, explained during her presentation so uh, so what, first we checked the bylaw the narrative what what basically they included and then we asked the question to the municipal administration whether they're implementing the provisions that they have included in their own bylaw and then we came to the uh, uh, citizens to question whether they have seen the cities 
uh, implementing what they have included in the bylaw. So it was a it was part of the study. So there is no way you can participate now. We have a question from uh, Rajit Kumar Rajendranji. Can we get this presentation? So uh, okay, we can definitely. Uh, do we have their emails more? So can you please uh, make sure that uh, Rajit ji gets a copy of the presentation? Uh, or I you think can we share can the share in the chat box. Sa the presentation. Right, right. You can share the share the presentation. You can do it right now if you, if you right. can. Uh, there is an anonymous attendee. What was your data source check claims made by the city? I think I have already explained that. Uh, uh, Binay Deodharji is asking how to get copy of municipal bylaws adopted by my city, Thane Maharashtra. I could not find it on its website. Ravinder, sir, could you please uh, <laughs> let him know whether there is any legal process that citizens can resort to to get a copy of their bylaws? I think it should be <laughs> available somewhere. Or, uh, ask him to you use the RTI. RTI, yeah. Okay. For your information, <laughs> this uh, uh, this advisory and bylaws was the first book we brought out under Swachh Bharat Mission. This was issued in September 2016 when the rules were, uh, you know, issued in April uh, 2016. We brought yes. out a guidance note for bylaws. Now, mm -hmm. for a more exhaustive guideline, you, they can refer to Delhi notified bylaws. Delhi yeah. notified bylaws are very exhaustive. For right, Tana, right. I don't know. There must be. There must be. No, sir. I, I just let me ask a connected question. Does the cities have any obligation to put their municipal bylaws in the public domain or proactively disclose their bylaws? Is there any such uh, any such uh, policy exist in our country, sir? I think by public disclosure law, they have to. Okay. So, uh, Binay ji can probably check with, uh, visit the municipality and check with them whether he can collect a copy. Otherwise, uh, you have to go for uh, Back to Information Act RTI application. So, uh, Dr. Damodar Lele is, uh, okay, it's not a question, it's rather a comment. Our city is working closely with state or central pollution control boards or every authority is operating independently as if other authority does not exist. Uh, sir, would you like to comment on this? We couldn't get the question, sir. So the question is, are cities working closely with state or central pollution control boards or every authority is operating independently as if other authority does not exist? I mean, it's it's basically, it's not even a question. It's basically his observation. But if you have anything to kind of comment, you can. They are, they are great on directions of the Secretary Urban Development Department and they have to report to the SPCB. They are mandated to report to the SPCB every year. Right, right. right. Okay, so we have a question from Ashish Vaishnav. So Ashish ji is asking, how do we define decentralized waste management in bylaws? So Ashish ji, decentralized waste management is given the first priority when SWN 2016 rule as the first uh, uh, option that the local administration should exercise before they consider going for a centralized system. So I don't think there is any specific, any separate definition required uh, in the bylaws. It is very well defined in the SWM 2016 rule itself. So Asis Ji has uh, one more question. Uh, which are the processing solutions which are suggested for the wet and dry wastes? Uh, I honestly didn't get this question much. I think uh, he is asking uh, what is mentioned in the bylaws about the processing solutions. Okay, okay. So it's it it should be duties duties of the local government. It should come under the duties of the local government. Yes, so yes, they, would, is... they would explicitly explicitly yeah. they would disclose how how they are going to treat their collected dry and wet waste. And and respective bylaws are mentioned that for wet waste it's either composting or biomethanation for uh, for dry waste it's recycling and. Uh, only inert should go to material, the landfill. So these things are, recovery. yeah, material recovery. This is specifically mentioned in the bylaws, the way we see the practices in the cities. So mm -hmm. they came from the bylaws itself. So, so we have a colleague from Sri Lanka, uh, Shan Raja. Uh, forgive me if I mispronounced your name. Uh, um, he's, he or she is asking, enforcement is regional issue, I presume. We also have the same issue. 
we have number of bylaws in place, but enforcement is weaker part. What are strategies that some of Indian municipal co corporations are adopted to fix this issue? Ravinder sir, would you please uh, like to respond to this? Enforcement is regional issue uh, or local issue. I mean, his observation is probably. Yeah. Uh, it is a local issue. Municipalities are uh, responsible for the function of solid waste management and enforcing it also. Now, once uh, uh, the notification is there, or the rules are themselves there, they have to implement it. But along with Sanka, we are also enforcement parties, uh, not so strong even today. Right. Because we are trying to build up our own institution that we will be able to say that we are having 100% treatment facility. And we need to extend the door-to-door -door collection system to every nook and corner. So that is not the case in uh, at least certain parts. So our sanitation service, that is cleanliness service, is a carrot type of policy to encourage them, citizens, the resident welfare associations, bulk waste generators, everyone along with our municipal bodies as a carrot policy. In India, there is a national green tribunal. Depending upon the cases which are coming, uh, complaints coming to it, uh, they are taking a stick policy also. And they are taking very strong uh, stand on that just before the COVID disaster. Because of that COVID disaster, uh, the things got a little derailed there. NGT was getting very stringent. So now again, uh, it is active. And uh, I think by next year, again, there will be a, a strong uh, implementation enforcement from the National Green Tribunal. National Green Tribunal. Yeah. So that stick is also now available in India. Right, sir. Right. So the next question is from Prajwal Sharma. Prajwal ji is asking, what should be the process of amendments in existing bylaws in an ULB? Ravinda, sir. Any new rule clearly says that notwithstanding the provisions of other existing bylaws, you know, we are implementing this. So amendment is not a difficult process, but all the time it is like a new rule only. Right. So uh, if there is a specific, uh, uh, you, you know, a rule which will be exempted, that is clearly mentioned in the uh, amend, amended rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Prajwalji, uh, basically the the proposed re re revision in the existing bylaw is supposed to be put as a proposal in the meeting, in a specially convened meeting of the elected uh, representative of a local government. And that meeting must, uh, the, the, the quorum of the meeting will constitute at least more than 50% of the elected members' uh, presence. So that will basically validate, uh, or that will basically uh, uh, recognize this as a valid meeting, which is qualified to approve any amendment in the existing bylaw. It's just a formality, the legal formality that the local government basically are supposed to follow. Darshanji is asking, is there any fund or grant for private waste recycler? I don't think this question has any connection with... Uh, so is it related to bylaw? Definitely, no, there is no... Bylaw cannot provision any fund or grant to waste recycler. Uh, ca can we have recorded footage, uh, anonymous attendee? Definitely, we can try to provide the footage. So I think yeah, they will email. get it in the YouTube Atinda, because it's already live streaming in various uh, social Achha, media. We are streaming it live. Okay. Yes, so okay. they will get it in the YouTube later on. Yeah, okay. You can also put it out. I mean, if you have all their emails, you can just share the YouTube video links there. So you if you are floating in YouTube, my request would be if, if I have said something uh, not, uh, doesn't sit very nicely with the government, please edit it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> You didn't say anything like that, sir. <laughs> uh, do you offer certificate after this webinar? No, for there's no. So it was mentioned in the announcement only that uh, for this masterclass there yeah. is no certificates. Yeah, yeah. So uh, next question is from Solomon. So Solomon is a good friend. 
uh, is SWM services included as service under ESMA, Essential Services Management Act? If not, is there any plan to include it to ensure that this service does not get impacted under any circumstance or crisis? Ravinder, sir, would you like to respond? No, it is not under ESMA. Uh, but there have been cases whenever there were uh, strikes by the sanitation staff, the administration uh, threatened to bring it under ESMA. Without that also... ESMA is a situational response, I guess. Um, I mean, ESMA can be enforced by the respective authority at any specific yes. requirement to respond to so, any specific but requirement. we must salute our sanitation staff also. They have been faithfully doing it uh, every time, including the COVID period. So that, that stringent action need not be necessary. It will be definitely implemented if the situation warrants. Right, right. So the next question is from Dr. Kushbu. Uh, so uh, Dr. Kushbu is asking, dumping along the creek in the cities near the sea is a big issue. Can center come up with some strict rules for the enforce for the enforcing the ULBs to notify bylaws at least. So basically, uh, she is concerned about uh, about uh, you know dumping of waste along the creeks. Uh, she is she is from Maharashtra, uh, maybe from Mumbai. This is an illegal practice, sir. Dumping dumping solid waste anywhere. It goes along with burning and dumping should not be allowed. Right, right. So, uh, Dr. Kushpu, it is definitely the prerogative of the local government. They can always uh, in, have this issue included in the bylaw if it is not already there, part of it. But enforcement, as you rightly pointed out, even more study basically pointed out that despite sustainable provisions are part of the existing bylaws, the challenge, the actual challenge is implementation. Even though the, in many cases, the cities claim that, yes, we are doing it, but the citizens opined otherwise, that they haven't seen the cities practicing what they, many provisions that basically they have got included in the in the bylaw. Uh, the next question is from Gitehan Zila Lim. Uh, please forgive me if I butchered your name. Uh, thank you more for your presentation. I'm also excited by this discussion. I get many points. I want to ask you the implementation approach. Uh, this is what we it? are discussing all about, the implementation approach, which is the right, biggest right. challenge we are discussing from the beginning. So I think he has right. figured it out by this time. So this is the biggest right. challenge we are facing. Yeah. The next question is Akash Deep. Can independent company take monthly fees from house or businesses? for their waste management. So if, if the independent company is in contract or the urban local body has given them contract for managing their waste, so they can get it. I mean, it's depending whether they are they are that they have that agreement or they are impaneled, they have been selected by the urban local body for service providing. So they can get it, I guess. But collecting fees, is it allowed, Ravinder, sir? Can private company be allowed to collect fees from houses or business for waste management? Now, this is, this is you know, if some private colonies by themselves engage a waste management company. Okay. So certainly it is at a fee. Otherwise, nobody right. gives a free service. They can do that. Right. But right. uh, the resident welfare association, private colony, will be responsible for fulfilling the SWM rules. Right, right. Okay, okay. That clarifies. And they should have that authorization from the urban local body only. I mean, if. Right, right. No, no, so even that, if in Gurugram, that, that, Gurugram they are, that, yeah. that they are asking nowadays, authorization, etc., it need not be. You see, uh, if they are found out to be you know, violating by dumping and burning, etc. severe action will be taken. Right, right. But the onus is with the waste generator. And but the again, the the onus is with the hire uh, or the, the resident welfare association who is hiring the services. 
Right, yeah. right. Again, yeah, sir, that's a monitoring sir. issue. I was saying that, as, as sir said, that if they are found violating the rules or dumping or something, they will be severely penalized. But again, who will do the monitoring? Who will take the responsibility of this monitoring mecha mechanism? That's also an issue we have seen. Yeah. The next question is from Nagesh ji. Uh, Nagesh ji is asking, while the Swat Selection questionnaire is very systematic and even has leading questions where the answers are obvious, the same is not presented as best practices by Mohua or NIUA. Sir? I can't understand it because such a survection is uh, that questionnaire, etc. is built on nothing but uh, SWM rules. Right? From door-to-door -door collection, segregation, etc. that has been designed to comply with these rules. Right, right. Absolutely, yes. So, Akasdeep is saying also municipal body impose penalty for not segregating waste at their source. Of course, they can if uh, the municipality uh, accepts only segregated waste and they transport only waste in a segregated manner and they have separate facilities according to the waste streams for their, for their treatment, they can definitely do that. Uh, and when once again Nagas is asking the world wise result of such surveillance is uh, not shared publicly. Uh, doing so would create pressure at world level on the world engineer and the councillor to comply with the SBM model. Uh, can SS go written. to world level, sir? Okay. We have we have requested the state governments. You see, this is a state subject. The subject matter which we have been discussing is a is a state subject state and subject, the yes, function yes. function is by the urban local party we have written that right, from time to time they can conduct ward level such surveys it is uh, you know for the ministry to do the ward level assessment for more than 1 lakh wards would be uh, you know beyond our uh, scale hmm. we are reaching out to nearly 5000 urban local bodies but to go to one lakh it will be too much. That has to be done yeah. by the state government missionary themselves. Yeah, sir, we have uh, already exhausted the stipulated time. But with your kind permission, can we just take questions for five more minutes and then wrap it up? Is that okay, sir? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the next question is from Dipti Bapat. So Dipti ji is asking, do we have regulatory protocol for? STP sludge disposal. Yes. The STP is in a, not in the, our subject. Yeah. Let's continue. I think I think uh, 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 Ravinder sir's video is frozen. Maybe we have lost him for yeah. some time. So let's wait and let me read the next question. Uh, if some question if is the, answerable by us. Yeah, if I don't, I I think we have to, we we should be able to take at least two three more questions and then we have to close and then we have to yeah, respond how we can phone. respond. Yeah. So one more question from Nagas ji. If the bylaws do not contain specific provisions of such surveillance questionnaire, how can we expect the ULBs to meet the requirements? Uh, Nagas ji, the purpose of municipal bylaw and such surveillance are very different, right? So if I try to put, put things in simpler terms, uh, such surveillance is more of a performance assessment of uh, uh, you know sanitation performance uh, by the local government, right? So, and, and municipal bylaw is a legal instrument to enforce certain things. And it is not necessary and not possible also that everything that municipal bylaw is encompassing must come under the purview of such selection. But definitely some points that we have tried to raise, even more factored them in her presentation, uh, that should come under the, should be considered under the purview of such selection. But everything that municipal bylaw includes uh, may not be uh, possible to be brought under the purview of SS question. Um, Anit Kohli, uh, Kohle, can you please share the presentation? Definitely we will. Sandeep Khashnabhiji. So it has been shared bylaws... already. 
it has been shared already yeah, okay in the chat so box, please yeah. yeah okay just share it once more if you can anit kole uh, sandeep khasnav is ji asking how bylaws of ulps can integrate the informal sector okay more have you found any evidence of any informal sector and the narrative that you found in the bylaws can you share with uh, sandeep ji please so it's a classic example of pune we can say that pune's bylaw is uh, is very nicely narrated the integration the whole process the system of integration and uh, in yeah. practical also we can see the swachh cooperative how they have uh, in collaboration with uh, pune municipal corporation they have integrated the you know so yeah pune is an so sandeep ji Yes. So I'm sorry, Chief, I think I disappeared for a few moments. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. But we uh, knew that you are going to come back to. <laughs> yes, yes, I can understand. So Sandeep Ji, Pune Municipal Corporation has a, a, a provision in their bylaw for integration of informal sector. As a matter of fact, Pune's, uh, the entire city's door-to-door -door collection is managed by a cooperative of informal waste pickers. It's called Swachh Cooperative, Swachh Pune. It's it's one of you know one of a kind of a project or one of a kind of an initiative. So you can reach out to us later and we will share more details with you. Saurabh so Singh ji is asking who has right to decide the actual amount of user charge and fine? Uh, is it it's state council is council state or others? Uh, Ravinder sir, would you like to respond, please? <laughs> it is the council. It is the council. Yeah. <clears throat> okay uh recording we have already do send me the presentation to rudolph uh, okay we'll send the presentation uh how to cure mother earth cancer okay that's not a question for us i'm sure snehit prakash in in case of small towns where most of the funding comes from state state transfers as opposed to own sources how do a mayor maintain balance between local needs under bracket bylaws and state level priorities? Uh, I don't understand the contradiction that he's trying to point out. So it is better. In, to... in any way, the cities do not have much uh, own source revenues other than it's a very it has big trades or big industrial areas a lot. So I think state funds. Uh, I mean, what is the I mean, bylaw? It's legal framework, and they have to implement it. It's not much about spending money. Is he talking about the expenses incurred for solid waste management system? Uh, the question itself is not very clear, or maybe I was unable to understand the question that he's asking, but then that is how much we can ask. Like, There is no direct connection between uh, funds and the bylaws. Right? Bylaws are basically mandates, legal mandates. Uh, please email most presentation. Uh, definitely, we will share presentation again. Okay. How accurate is the assessment? The Swat Sarvekshan ODF GFC scores do not match with the actual state of the city. So he's talking about the practical scenario and the SS scores. He has found a gap between that. So. Mm -hmm. uh, if Sir wants to respond. I think uh, I think there was a lot of deliberations, yeah. yeah. But the SS twenty twenty three, I guess. Uh, I mean, these surveys, these assessments are mostly done by you know third party agency, and they hire uh, people, uh, local resources to kind of do these assessments, and sometimes the competency factor also kicks in. So, Ravinder sir, can please uh, respond? Like, you see, every selection like, tool kit. Toolkit is prepared, and there is a uh, strong uh, training of the third party assessors. In uh, local level, the problem, uh, as we see it, is you know this such uh, solution direct assessment takes takes place in one month time. Okay, yeah. so it uh, sometimes cuts both ways. One of the city in the recent uh, survey came saying that I got no marks for the plant which was down for annual maintenance. 
<laughs> so the questionnaire was very clear huh? questionnaire was very clear when uh, our assessor is there this is the time period so the city lost marks sometimes the city gains marks and the some of the rest of the time it may not be operating also we are we know that there are certain issues but these the swatch survey is not a tool to replace good sound solid waste management operations in the city it was meant to bring a competitive spirit between the cities so that by themselves they adopt the solid waste management rules otherwise it would have taken much longer time for the cities to join the effort in cleaning up right 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 Okay, so next question, probably this is the last one that I can take. What about villages? Is it come under urban bylaws? No, Rekhaji, for, for panchayats, they are, uh, they are governed by a different set of laws and that law also provides them uh, with all the scopes to have their own bylaws. So panchayats can have their own bylaws. They don't have any compulsion to follow urban bylaws for that matter. Uh, Dr. N.B. Majumdar, it was a pleasure participating. Thank you, Dr. Sav. Uh, it was a pleasure to listen to Mr. J.B. Ravinder. It is a pleasure to all of us. So um, I know there are many, many questions. I've probably been able to take half of the question that is basically listed out here. But since we have already exhausted the time and we have actually extended uh, the, the, this uh, discussion by about 10 minutes now, so respecting everyone's time, especially Ravinder's time, I have to close it now. Uh, so before I close, a big thanks to Ravinder sir for his time and sharing the wealth of his experience and expertise. Uh, we, we promise that we will stay with this agenda and uh, we will have more deliberations, more discussions, especially with Ravinder sir and the ministry because it's pretty much their prerogative. So I'm sure uh, Ravinder sir will have taken note of the issues that the ministries can uh, consider for uh, strengthening this uh, system of uh, municipal bylaw, uh, uh, both adoption and enforcement uh, angle. So on this note, I thank everyone, our entire team, uh, Aniket, Kaifi, uh, Minakshi, whosoever is there. Thank you more for all the hard work, do the study and uh, uh, wonderfully presenting the summary of uh, the findings. And thanks to all the participants uh, who are turning up in such huge number. And I, 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 I promise that we will try to find ways to uh, answer the remaining questions that we haven't been able to take in this event and we'll try to use your email or uh, whichever else way we can actually reach out to you uh, to kind of reach uh, to answer the questions that we haven't been able to take for this event. So on this note, a big thanks to all of you for joining us today. Please take care and stay safe. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Atinji, and thank you, Mao, and thanks to all our dear participants. Thank you so much. Thank you so thank much you, for thank joining you. us.